So I'm, I'm medium-sized, successful in being very German. <laughs> Maybe it was not very clear that we will change after 10 minutes, so. So I have prepared a presentation and I will, I feel very important to have all these microphones and standing here, but it's for the TV take that I do not move too much. Uh, this is Schlosshof, 300 meters from there where ES ISB is. Uh, I was asked for those who are have never been there and want to see whether we can show around. We can do this tomorrow after finished or whenever you want. And I forgot uh, to introduce uh, the director of ESP to you, <laughs> uh, is Thorsten Veit. It was not clear whether we'll have the time to be here today, uh, so I didn't have it, him in my mind when I introduced the other people. So, I changed the title of my presentation a bit, the programmatics of organizational coaching. And the perspectives for this presentation are how can organizational coaching be a profession? That's a long discussion in DBVC. And which position should organizational co coaching occupy in the field? And then what is my main issue? How can organizational coaching contribute to the future? I know it's not easy to say what the future will be because it is in the future, but we have ideas about it. What does this mean, can this mean for professional careers, for the quality of work, for organization development, and in the background, the development <coughs> of economy and society. Uh, <coughs> I always look like this into the world, so wondering what could be behind so yesterday we sat together, Gianfranco asked us, say two attributes that characterize you. This was an interesting exercise. Um, I think one of mine is, and I found this is an old picture of mine, it's more than 65 years ago, uh, that I'm always, being, I'm always interested in what is behind the horizon. No wonder I'm a Sagittarius and Certainly, you do not hit a target on the floor when you try uh, to shoot like this. So, please follow me a bit in my trials to shoot into the stars and hope it will land somewhere on our planet. Uh, I'm sure it's very, so the field is very different. Some, some say, oh, that's totally new to me. I thought coaching is one-to-one. -one. And I say, oh, that's what we do in our company already since years. So both reactions may occur to you, and let's exchange on that. Uh, sometimes uh, I get the reaction, I'm a be perfect driver person, and I get the reaction from others uh, whose be perfect driver is activated. Oh, I wanted to be a coach in order to have simple situations that are human, with people, and now you come and tell me all the horizons I have to cover, that's too strenuous for me. So it's not my aim to elicit a lot of perfectionism, um, but I want to outline my ideas about challenges of the field and the expected future. I'm not saying that any of us have to meet all these challenges but I suggest that we acknowledge the complexity of organizational coaching and it will even become more complex, I guess, and that we define our profiles and services within frames of references like this. So, 
I start with the most spread understanding of coaching, the classical coaching approach. This means a conversation and confidence about issues on professional life. This is the one-to-one -one coaching situation. But uh, we are training a lot of people under the label coachings and many of them are not interested to offer this kind of services. They are interested in something else. What they look for under the topic coaching, they are looking for competencies to combine their content ideas about organization, about development with, with the people they are working with, really to bring it together and to develop competences, especially competences of understanding people and of communicating in a way that people are reached. And coaching is a container, a key, a key word, and they are not interested to be a one-to-one -one coach. They also mean a quality of relationships. Many of them come and say, uh, in my company, the work I do is too technically oriented. I want to be more people oriented. I want to uh, have the quality of human relationships within my work and I hope coaching helps me somehow to make this happen. And some even are ready to change their professions. They want to be now somebody who is, has these competences, uh, is uh, standing for these kinds of relationships and wants to have a new identity. And if they are ambitious enough, they say, in my company, in my team, I want that we have a culture like this. And this is all called coaching. So, as you know, coaching is deriving from different roots and coaching is usually just defined in accordance with the individual preferences of the coach. And this is why we have uh, such a wild field of, of approaches to the label coaching. Some say I am a neurodynamic coach. -o. So they define themselves by the kind of uh, understanding people, understanding the world, and within a, a psychodynamic school frame of reference. Others define themselves by methods. I'm working with narratives, or I'm working with stories, or with constellations. Others are defining themselves by media. I'm working in outdoor settings, I'm working with horses, I do online coaches, others define themselves by settings, I work with individuals, groups, others define themselves by types of clients, I'm an executive coach, but we have not a clarified map to define what coaching could be in the modern organizational world. So the question is, is, is there any need for a definition or putting it into an order? Maybe not. But I usually like to find some orders. And so, uh, and maybe because so many people uh, are attracted by the profession coaching, that it might really be a new extra profession. And we had a discussion in DBVC what, when can uh, activity be a profession? And in the literature is discussed, it sounds the case if it defines a special relationship between human being and society. For example, a special relationship is on health, so it's be a medicine, that's a profession. Or a special relationship is dealing with law, so being a law is a profession. And within these professions today, there are very different activities, very different roles. And still it's a profession. So some, it's a container defined by a relationship between a human being and aspects of society. And if we accept this as 
a definition source, then I would suggest to say coaching deals with the relationship between human being and the world of organizations. On the one hand, and between human being and the world of professions, on the other hand. And I don't know as a profession up to now which is specialized and at the same time very broadly defined in these relationships. So the ISB way, how we try to do that is not so much starting with the individual who wants to be coach, but starting with the organizational field and try to understand what the under, uh, organizational needs from professions that are developing. And it has always to do with the relationship between organizational field and human being. So, organizational coaching is defined as a profession of its own, we try it. And it's defined by perspectives and expertise. It's not defined by school concept, it's not defined by methods, it's not defined by settings or anything. So, if you're an expert for the relationship between human being and the field of organizations or human beings and the field of professions, then you are a coach and then you choose whatever contents, approaches, settings and other definitions of your specifics uh, you like. So, it's based on the challenges of the organizational field and I want to add, it's not only individual services in this field, it's also to design and to develop programs for organizations and for professional fields to bring up quality in the relationship human being organization and human being professional field. So, it's, uh, so I hope many coaches besides they are doing individual work, also develop programs. So, the so one perspective I said is the organizational world uh, and how does it look from the perspective of a human being. And for that we have conceptual questions uh, in, in our book uh, Organisationsentwicklung I've uh, written on that. So one of the discussion is how much and what kind of organizational context do I need when I give coaching services? What is my... because I cannot endless include all organization, all society, but I also cannot define it habitually. What is my business or not? It depends on the question. So it's a, a fluid uh, standard question, how much context do I need and how do I describe this context and, and do, I, do I describe it in a way so that I can deliver my coaching services I want to deliver. And also in DBVC we don't have clarified ideas how that should be. We only say for your definition of your profession you should tell us how you position yourself and we try to find out whether this is plausible to us. But you have the free choice from what you choose for that. But we want to be convinced that somehow you take this question serious. And the other way around is, uh, especially when you're doing programs and work with organizations uh, on this subject, how do we look at the human being from the perspective of the organization. How much human can we include in our considerations? We cannot include everything, so from childhood to adult life or ancestors or whatever. We, all, we always have to decide what is my concept of a human being in the light of the coaching question and in the light of uh, how the organization now looks at this person. And that's the same 
um, in the dimension professional world. Um, the human being is looked at from an organizational world's perspective. Um, this must mean professional world's perspective. So, uh, how much and which parts of personality should we deal with when we think about professional careers, lifelong professional careers? And it's not only a question for me to accompany an individual to think about the professional world and what role do I want to play there and what career and life cost do I want to go there. Um, it's also necessary to understand where the world of professions will develop to invite people to train themselves in a way uh, they will meet the needs of the future. So if we want to be a specialist for the relationship human being and professional world, somehow we have to uh, find pictures about our, our ideas, what the professional world should be and how it will develop over time. Also, nobody really knows. Oh, no, so I mixed it up. This was organization, this is true. Now that's the, the same question for the connection between human being and world of professions. That's me again. It's sometime early. And as you can see, I always like to blow something a bit up. <laughs> One of my sentences is saying, I'm still myself, but hopefully on a higher level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was no surgery. Somehow it, it found its way. <laughs> So, I want to point uh, to some horizons for organizational coaching um, that are connected with this view. For me, it's clear coaching is interdisciplinary and coaches are decaslets. That's a, the picture for it. So, a coach will not win when he only is good at one discipline, for example, psychology, and understanding the psychological functioning and background of people. Uh, this is fine, he should know something about this, but at the same time he should understand uh, the professional fields this person is working in, the organizational culture maybe, the uh, person is working in, uh, they should know about law questions around all that. They should know about technical questions, money questions, political developments. And so, if they are quite good in many of these disciplines and not maximum good only in one, then they are good coaches. And this has consequences for the way we train coaches. And we still have um, many coaching trainings that are small psychotherapist trainings, understanding people. And this is fine if it's clearly declared and this person later says, I'm a psychological consultant. Question is whether we should call that coaching or I think we should not call it organizational coaching. So I always try to say, I have been a psychotherapist for many, many years and trained psychotherapists. It's wonderful to know a lot about that and to have made experience for yourself. But it's not the identity we can just transfer into the organizational field and say, if you know more about yourself and you know, better health, then you will be a better professional and your organizational will develop. It's just not true. So, I say it in a, in a picture, uh, a coach has the competence, hopefully, and the respons responsibility for integrated answers to issues in the organizational world. Uh, 
Integration is an important word to me. Uh, Gerald Tüter, a neuroscientist, a friend of ours, he once asked me at the phone, we talked about holidays in Gomera, how would you describe the upcoming century? And without thinking much, I said, it's a century of being responsible for integration because our world is falling apart. So one of the highest ranked responsibilities is to bring things in a shape that they can be integrated and not allow yourself just to pick something and build up your separate perspective and leave it to it, the client, how the client finds ways to integrate that. You would never accept this uh, if you buy a new, a new telephone. So somebody comes and he's a specialist for good sound and tells you all he needs about that and what you need and then goes away and tell it to the others that help you to fix the phone. So you certainly expect that they bring it together and offer it for you in an integrated way, at least in a way that it be, can be complementary. So to shape things in a complementary way is, is important for us. And we have to do the work to integrate. And what we still allow ourselves very often is to shift the responsibility to integrate uh, to the organizations or to the individual clients. So, and because we have to offer some kind of integration, uh, we have to struggle for understanding and designing the world of the future uh, for society, for economy, for organizations. There's a big issue discussed under the label new work uh, or um, the future of learning. So we have sh now shareware, many universities open their classes uh, to webinars, to everybody. So we will have a revolution on the one hand of learning and on the other hand we will still in the major dimensions of, of the functioning, of the psychic functioning, I don't think things will change too much. But somehow we have to integrate it and find ways between polarities and very blown up ideas. We have to deal with, uh, with the tension, for example, uh, we have a, a media bureau in ESB and we develop a lot of new media concepts and ESB, ISB campus and things like that. And uh, we always get uh, strokes for being very, very modern. But then uh, it's not easy to invite people into really use that. They do not even read their emails. So, <laughs> so it's, it's not easy somehow to bring these things together and to go uh, a way that is really uh, acceptable for a majority of selected groups we have to work with. And so we have a lot of interaction in our training groups to understand how they use media, what the realistic motivation is really to, new, to use new modern uh, technologies and all these things. So we somehow have to be very universally interested. And for me, that's, um, the responsibility is quite holistic. And we have to integrate uh, very sometimes contrary dimensions. Uh, for example, life and work. Uh, you know that uh, with uh, life balance and all this, uh, what, what ideas do we have of uh, a good life in future and how can it be combined with work in the light of that people have home offices, that people have no clarified presence times uh, and all, uh, that people have many more roles than they had 10 years before, many mo more uh, contexts they have to refer to uh, and how can they combine this 
with uh, acceptable life in space and time because uh, you cannot you are still a biological and uh, uh, be, uh, being with a soul especially I think uh, we try to combine working and learning one of the consequences is especially in the second year of uh, training at our institute we invite uh, people certainly to bring their cases as many programs do and then that they learn we define a, a set of approaches a set of didactic rules how they can clarify a problem how they can uh, consult each other and then really uh, we we, we find designs that say uh, have dialogues on the problem in a way they also can have dialogues in their company. The same didactic, so that we don't uh, have a separate didactic in the, in the training room and then now how you learn on other subjects in your company and how you invite others into shared learning processes is not our business it should be our business and we it's not easy really to integrate it because if somebody really comes from a company with a big od process and uh, the person has one hour time for a learning setting a supervision setting it's a didactic challenge to select what on what level to work with that and how can everybody, how can we shape it in a way that everybody is able to contribute and you do not have a, a teaching a supervisor for each problem because this is not a model you can transfer to work. There are no teaching supervisors, there are colleagues who learn together and learn from each other. So it doesn't make sense to invent a didactic, you need specialists to go further with the same learning. We develop didactics that is useful in, for normal professionals uh, in the company surrounding. So, and uh, from psychotherapy, we had a didactic and education for individual learning. Uh, but we are, since years, developing a didactic for organizational learning. It's not so important that the individual has much time to learn for him or herself. It's important that the way everybody deals with the question uh, of the client, uh, they all have an opportunity to think, think about self-controlling and understanding organizational uh, uh, culture and all these things so that the whole system learns. So it's not only individual learning. And this is the same when we look at HR. Um, so how can we combine individual careers with HR development? So many companies, they offer to people that they can hire a coach. And it's, there are many separate teaching processes of any kind. But this is not economical and it's not even a good model to learn in a company context. So HR can think about how can we set up learning programs that are miniature models for everybody can learn with everybody in the company and we develop a shared understanding so it's systems qualification, not only individuals qualification. Yeah, and organizational development um, has to be connected with many kind of per perspectives of coaching. I'm not going in to say what do you think, what are the major perspectives that we need for coaching. But somehow in the end, my idea is um, my partner is an entrepreneur and I'm empathetic to entrepreneurs because I'm an entrepreneur myself. So in the, in the end, 
uh, my responsibility understanding is uh, an integrated one. I have to develop things in a way that the entrepreneur would say, okay, this is a way I can do, develop my company. And certainly 15 years ago, we have been so often so annoyed that we have so wonderful psychological concepts, but CEOs, they don't understand anything. They think it's a waste of time that everybody goes through that. And uh, they don't understand us. We said, and HR sometimes they have wonderful programs. Why are we not important in the company? And I guess we are not important because we are, did not develop to a level that an entrepreneur would say, this, my partner understands what my overall decas led responsibilities are and offers me something specific. I understand what his or her specifics are and I understand what culture uh, he or she want to bring to my company. And then we check and I sometimes say, if you can sell your services to a small sized company, then you may be pretty good because they don't, they don't buy very specialistic programs of any kind. The, the boss doesn't know, That's, it's interesting, but how is this helping me to develop my company? So, <laughs> small boy blowing up. Uh, it's very clear, and I think this is something uh, we will hear tomorrow as well, with the dialogic organizational organization development. Uh, we, we don't have ready-made answers. There are so many perspectives and so many open questions that each time we have to invent, develop something new in order to have a chance really to do a specific service to our clients and to the organizations we work with. So certainly it's okay and necessary to relate to knowledge and experience to all the contents we already have, concepts and available methods. Um, but the first preference is uh, we are able to work to design new experimental programs for, in a, for a specific client system in a specific situation. So we integrate all this knowledge from a different mindset. And for example, my colleague and friend Volker Koeninger, he, he, for example, changed uh, his contact with the companies. Uh, if they make a pitch and say, we want this and this program, we have thought about this, and what can you offer me to me to that program? He says, I will not come. But if you have a development question and you bring two or three uh, key figures of your company for a half day to our institute, I will be here with two or three of my staff and we want to understand what your question is. And then we think of, we give a first design how from our culture, how we would offer you what kind of service and if you are interested to have that, then we can have a contract. But we are not ready to, to jump only to get out the money to jump into any ideas you already made. And if your ideas are plausible, that's fine. But we start from the way we understand your question and uh, in a, from, in a bargaining uh, how we can work together. And since that, uh, he has more jobs than before. And he feels better. So somehow it's a, it's a, a paradigm shift. And we do not yet have this in education, not even at the university. The paradigm shift is first we need really to develop a learning culture together to deal with complexity. And we, we do not jump into the content focus unless we have a minimum of developing a shared learning culture. And if you think we can do anything on the content level, 
without developing a, a shared learning culture, then we will have a lot of pain later. And so we insist on, from the beginning, the, the cultural approach to work on organizational development and organizational cultures should be an example for the way we work later and for the culture we introduce to you, how you can go on learning and working with what we offer to you. And it's also another paradigm shift. Usually we, uh, we used to think about now let's do some content, let's learn some tools. And then at the end we go into considerations of transfer. So I change that. I say let's make a little example of a real learning experience, a miniature, and uh, build up a learning culture uh, with this example and the first priority is not to find a solution for the example, the first priority is to find a common understanding of learning procedure with each other. And we integrate knowledge of all kind into this process. So it's no longer trans transfer, it's implicating. So I believe um, a coach should also be a specialist for learning and for example for individual learning we have developed a lot of concepts for that which I will not uh, present here now. The best known is the three worlds model of personality. So we do not try to understand personality for in the biological, uh, biographical dimension and privately and then think about how, what does this mean for profession and organization. We have a different model. We say the person is a bundle of roles played on the stages, played on worlds. And for our purpose, there is no other person. You are always in roles, you are always on stages, you are always uh, co-creative, interactive with others to create realities. And we, we use a lot the theater metaphor to uh, investigate and to discuss this. And certainly uh, this means not reducing people on formal roles. The way you are human and the way you are unique, you have to put into your roles and into your place, place within the organization. And so you, uh, you also do not have a transfer problem afterwards because you address personality question as questions of playing in a play in my worlds and playing my roles and we have models like what, what does this mean for com competence, competence is role competence, times, context competence, times, matching to my lifestyle, to my understanding. So this is only one example of new concepts we have to support this shift in paradigms. And what I said before, uh, this doesn't mean we concentrate on individuals. I said also already something about integration. So I think a coach if he or she wants really to, to offer all the knowledge about humans and working and professionals to a company, should be able to invent programs, ideas how the organization can set up programs that everybody can learn what they think they should learn. So for me, coaching no wonder, because we have a, a coaching academy. We are not, no longer consultants. Our main business is teaching people, training people. So certainly this is why I find it so important. So um, I have a, a colleague, uh, Gison from Chennai, India. Uh, uh, we met him on a, a meeting like this in Oxford. 
And he grasped that idea immediately. And he was a psychotherapist, a transactional psychotherapist. And he, he had, was in this teaching mode, I teach you what uh, games are and scripts are. And I want, he wanted to sell that to companies. And when uh, we got in contact, he understood it's important to bring them into contact and not teach them specific concepts. And he's doing a wonderful uh, work in Indian companies, just being um, a dramaturg, a regisseur, a, a, a director of choreographies that people meet who should dialogue and learn from each other and invent programs who, when, what, in what role, for what purpose, they should play this learning game together. And this is a diary, a diary um, company, huge. Uh, and uh, the, the benefit of this diary company was uh, they had immediately the consequences for less spoiled milk because uh, there was a learning process between systems. And he was a program director. He did not coach or teach individuals maybe sometimes a bit of it, but the logic is what does my understanding of coaching tell me what kind of programs do you need and who should uh, play which roles uh, that you can do it yourself because these are 12 uh, plants in all India. If, if you need for every process Myself, I have to build up a huge McKinsey Institute or something like that to help you. But that doesn't make sense. It it's, it's, would be a model that is inadequate from many aspects. So I do not start with that. I start from the beginning to help you to get some examples how learning can happen and how we can make learning programs for your company out of that and help you to run these programs yourself. And certainly individual support and really relating to the unique individuals involved is a part of that. But it's, it cannot replace the programs, intelligent programs. And that's the same for staff development. Uh, I, I, will, I will have enough time to give you an example for how I, I fantasize future organization development like this and future staff development like this in companies. So we have, uh, it's, it's all one, but in order to select your limited attention and your limited competence, somehow you have to differentiate the field and we differentiate it uh, from our perspective in these four fields. The learning field is organizational development. <coughs> so organizational development means at a major part of the invest learning together because there are no fixed answers. So all the coaching knowledge and all the coaching attitudes we have can be integrated into programs to organize the necessary learning while an organizational developmental process is happening. Usually there's not enough resources and space for that. And they just think they can do it somehow. And the other thing is uh, staff performance. You cannot, if the maturity of your system in dimensions of professionality is not very high or they're not very harmonizing with each other. Different cultures, they do not understand each other. They have different procedures, they have different languages. Uh, then the, uh, it's not easy to learn together while you are in an organizational developmental process because the outcome of the OD process is OD and not uh, um, personal uh, professional development of the individuals. So this is why uh, the staff should have 
a shared idea of competencies, somehow shared languages, somehow shared contents they use, somehow shared procedures. And the, the best is to learn it in the culture, is to learn together. So we prefer to uh, learning on work. If a company comes to us and say, can we send our specialists to you to Wiesloch? We say, yes, you can. But as soon as you have enough that it makes sense that they learn together, at your place and learn together with the partners who have to learn the same system, the system development effect would be much better. And more and more we have companies uh, who really invite us to s design and do programs for them because they understand they need to, to learn it, to do it themselves. And we give them for some time help to start it with, until there are enough people who understand the system and can perpetuate it within the company. It's not so easy to find a company that has such a wide horizon, but I'm talking about the future. You remember the Sagittarius. I guess it will come and I hear from some companies there are the mindset is already there. Maybe not yet how they do it practically. So and certainly there will always be uh, the question of professional development of individuals, people, freelancers who are on the market. Uh, this is a huge and important uh, part of the market. And uh, I have put separately um, the focus leadership and I wrote down leadership for creators. And I, I guess you, Gianfranco, will say uh, about a lot to say this afternoon because more and more we expect key figures in the organizations to be leaders and uh, in, entre, in, uh, intrapreneurs. So, uh, we have to develop and go with these new discussions around leadership. Uh, I will say some words about this later. And if, if you see, it's not, there are not clear borders between the one focus or the other focus. It's all one. But because we cannot do everything at, at the same time, so if somebody is coming to us for training and he has all, already has an organ, OD responsibility, the person should go into the curriculum for OD development. Or if the person is from the HR department, the person should go, if, if the person wants to learn for the actual professional situation, uh, to the um, uh, more professional development oriented uh, curricula. These are the roses right now flowering at our institute. I take the photo last week. So there are many, many, many flowers and it's not easy to define and select which are mine and how they connect to the, the whole. What will be a new, practically it is, I'm talking programmatically, there will be a new uh, criterion for quality and this means really to discuss from the coaching service offerers with the, with the coaching server serving takers. Is there any match, any, any shared reality around what we do, how we understand economy, uh, at what edge we start with developing it, uh, how long it takes. So I think the future will be that coaches will be much more challenged to say what their world and their understanding and their, their programmatic is. And we train two, two, two thirds of the people who come for us for training are internal people. There are many qualified people now in the companies who think about their programmatic. How do we understand learning? What will be the kind of services in our company, how we do HR uh, work or how we do stuff uh, performance development work and then find out whether this can match or the development in the direction of matching is wanted and what that means in terms of time, resources, roles and so on. 
Um, and this matching, and for that the coach needs to know who he is and for what uh, he, he can stand. And this also needs, if you are a coach who has a selected spectrum, you need to connect with other coaches who are in your cultural community so that you can work hand in hand, but have uh, expertise for other uh, perspectives on the same thing. And we even think in the development of uh, networks of small coaching companies. And the common shared culture helps them quickly to go together and build up some things they can offer to a company who needs a big thing. Otherwise, the big thing goes to McKinsey and the, the big companies that offer big programs, standards, and you cannot compete with these uh, offers of the big programs because you are too small. So we have also in, in our coaching field a challenge of entrepreneurship, of new forms of companies, of coaching offering companies and of co-working. This has many other aspects and we, we are setting up a working group to, to think about that. How uh, successful coaching companies can build up such a network. So this, some implications of ESB thinking are going with that. I just mentioned them. OD for us means developing human systems. So there are other systemic approaches. They say we look at processes and rearrange processes and people are context. Luhmann, the sociologist. That's interesting, but for me, I don't know how to work with that. For me, it's always, uh, I have always responsible people in their role, in the company, in mind. So for us, OD means developing human systems. And because uh, you cannot develop all subjects that are necessary, you all, always only can develop following an example of development and thus helping to build up an organizational culture, a culture of development, and understanding how we develop it, so that they learn the meta-competence to run their own organizational development wherever they need it, in what size they need it. So the, the OD is a vehicle for the organization to learn how they can do all kinds of ODs themselves. And this means, because you don't know the topics of all the ODs that might happen, this means in the first time cultural development. They have a shared understanding of what that could mean, how mature you need to be, how you deal with people and so on. Uh, this has also consequences on the question, what is, what is a team? Um, for us, a team is not those who sit together in one bureau. We have defined team as a community with shared responsibility. And so a team, uh, those belong to the team who play a responsible role uh, related to the focus we are working on. And if we think we have an IT problem in the, in the, uh, in the department, then other people have to be team members. Those who have to do with the IT and are also people from outside. So we have a, a, a new and different understanding, a dynamic understanding what a team is. Uh, and it changes when you change your focus. When you think it's a, it's a group dynamic psychological problem, other people are important as members of the team, uh, as if it's the same problem to think it's an IT problem. So we have a lot of material for that, I cannot go into that now. That's the same with the question of leadership. Uh, we developed a concept of leadership. Leadership is a relation. It's not quality of an individual. So the smallest 
unit of dealing with leadership is a leadership relationship. And it is no good or bad leadership, it's working or not working leadership. And there are many options how the cultures of these who have together built a leadership system, how they can work. There is no standard. And if somebody is a good leader in another context and he comes into a company where there is a total different system of leadership, he's not no longer a good leader because he cannot connect to this context. So it's it's a quality of networks, it's a quality leadership, it's a quality of culture. And uh, whether a company has a good leadership system or not, you can find, uh, you see when you see the chain from the client, the frontier of the client, up to the CEO, is it a communication system that is going through uh, impulses from up there, going down there, and from down there, up there. And any leadership chain is as good as the worst relationship part in it. So you get an economical thinking about where should I work on when I help, want to help to make the leadership system in this company better. So it is very much a systemic perspective. So this was the big bow. Uh, and if you have still some attention and press, I would some minutes give you an outline how I, uh, for example, understand OD from this perspective or how I understand programs for, for staff development from this perspective. Have you still enough breath? No? <laughs> yeah, I know it's a lot. So, uh, I did not give you a concrete example, I only give you an example of how an OD from combined with coaching could look like and what different services could be there. Um, we said uh, our understanding is working with human systems, so uh, let's say my friend Volker was successful on that pitch, they told them uh, how they want to develop uh, a department and then uh, they designed together an idea how the OD uh, could be in that department. And this might include not everybody, but some may be a part of it, some may not. Or new people may come in and be hired to develop that, and others can decide to change somewhere else because this is no longer their style. And, uh, and coaching can play a very good role into that. So uh, everybody already involved or uh, everybody who can be in um, uh, recruiting process, for example, gets three coaching sessions free. And these coaching sessions are not for any problems they have. They are for clarification, whether they have an idea what the OD could be, whether they like it or not, whether they feel competent to play a role within that, which roles that could be, with whom they want to work or not, think about what consequences, for example, for lifestyle, go dealing with family, with working time, or so. this will meet, mean in the next two years to find a standpoint whether they want to be a part of this OD bro process or not. And at the same time, while individuals try to clarify, there is a lot of feedback information for those who have designed the idea of organizational development. So maybe they find out with the people we have here, there is not enough uh, uh, resource that they really want to carry that on because they found out, most of them found out that it doesn't fit to their understanding. So this is a clarification for the individuals and feedback for the OD leaders. And this clearly means that the internal OD leaders, the consultants, 
helping with the organizational development and the coaches helping to clarify for people have to be connected and relating to the same system. It's not possible to have a consultant who is doing any kind of OD idea and then they have some coaches who do some kind of psychological work, then it will not fit to each other. And so I think a very specific understanding of coaching methods, procedures, relationships can very much help, for example, in the initial phase of an OD process. And certainly coaches facilitate processes like this. And if it's necessary to set up programs that people learn more, <coughs> that they feel mature, to take roles <coughs> or something like that, then the, the coaches can say, okay, if you want, I help you design a process within your company to get everything together so that there's a real chance that the OD process will be successful. And if OD learning is necessary, we help you to design it. We help you also to start it. But if there is a broad Necessary necessity to train people, um, this is not what we can do. And you have to think about how, how big can your OD process be. Maybe you should, how we say, bake smaller rolls and not <coughs> bake the big cake. And then there's a, a lot of qualified discussion bringing together uh, the understanding of the organizational development and understanding of people. And so that it really matches, matches for the sake of a good OD process and matches for the sake of comfort of, of people. And certainly, um, if the professional competence level is not so high or if it's very differentiated, so it doesn't work together, then you need to do a lot of professional training, I called it, uh, staff performance development um, that they have a chance when they are in the OD process that what they have to learn is not too much. They have a chance really to learning within the ongoing OD process. But if you are, do not know anything about leadership, the chance that you learn during the OD process around leadership, how to, be a, to shape leadership relationship is very low. For example, and then I stop with that, um, my colleague and friend Mike Minor, he works with middle-sized uh, entrepreneurs, hundreds and up to 2,000 people. And he's, so he always has a very direct personal relationship to the CEO, usually the owner of the company. And one of his offers is from our um, bro programs, uh, concepts, is a dialogue on responsibility. We have a concept for that, we have a learning design for that, we have a, a handout program how they can invite us into dialogues about responsibility along with work, along with OD. And he said, this is wonderful. I want that every key figure in my company knows the concept, learns about the attitude we uh, are in favor here, knows settings and roles and procedures, how to clarify on responsibility if uh, there's some kind of lack or crash in common understanding of responsibilities. And if the responsibility system is not developed enough, then uh, they can learn to sit together and find out which responsibility means uh, able to answer. And there are questions, maybe new questions, that nobody uh, decided to be able to answer or felt it's his duty to find answers. And then they sit together and develop uh, um, additional perspectives of the responsibility system in this company. And he got a a big job uh, with a lot of money uh, to help them to learn it 
And some of those who learn it are also trained to be a trainer for others. Like in SAP, they have uh, people uh, who have 10% are trained and 10% of their time they are available for coaching others. This has a tremendous effect, there's a job enrichment, they know the company, uh, and uh, this helps a lot, of, uh, a lot of communication between areas when they do such kind of jobs. And to set up a multiplying system, you do the same thing. So some of those who are interested, for 10% of their time in future, they teach others the system. So they roll it out within the whole company, and st still there's a small coaching company who is making this. They do not need too many people if they have a good program of multiplying. And this is an example how from a coaching perspective, staff performance development programs can be set up. And then in the end, the part of individually coaching people, teams, uh, around problems, hopefully, will only be a small part of our professional work. So, this is my contribution. I thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you.